Howdy, y'all. Jaheke here, and welcome to another adventure. Uh, we're going to go and pick up exactly where we left off in Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. We have just found a group of survivors that have not been enthralled in some slight off settlement outside of the capital. Now, the leader of this group, Lysiana, doesn't seem to be as truthful as she claims. Um, there is definitely someone hiding or still locked inside of this building that they were staying in while she let everyone else out for us to help. Then, out of the blue, she wants Cerulean, so she told us to come here to the Cerulean plant, try to negotiate with these Cerulean miners who are not giving up this resource unless we can provide them food, which they don't have. So let's go into this cave that she said was hidden, but it's clearly not. I mean, the cave is literally right there. And we will continue on. Let's go! First, increase Alex's gazelle grains. Hey, buddy, Tapa. Could you give us some cerulean? Who gives it? How did you find us? Someone gave me directions. What do you mean I stand out like a sore thumb? <laughs> if the purebloods over at Victory Squirrels have been given away our location, you never found us. The stuck up ourselves. <laughs> Thought they could come waltzing in here to manage ruling with nothing to offer in return. Ha! Looks like the boot's on the other foot. Now the capital's gone to shite. So they're resorting to sending you to negotiate. I know your game, sword. If you think we'll give in to intimidation, you got another thing coming. I didn't want to fight you. I really didn't want to fight you. Oh, I should eat a food. Give me an experience boost. And I got one more? Yeah. Yoink. Stop, Bluey. Am I dead yet? Oh, now you kind of are. Sorry. So she's a pure blood? There you are. Just after you left, Lysiana asked me to go and catch up with you in case you need a hand. Someone might have let slip that they're a little experienced in transporting barrels of cerulean. So she left Alfie alone. Okay. So this is Tapper's Den. Then well then after you. Yeah, let's go. Hello. Who are you? What happened to our guards? I beat them up. Eorzeans and rebels here to save the people of Garlemal? That doesn't make any god's damn sense. Why in the hells would you pass up the chance to put those imperial bleeps to the sword? Let me guess. None of you are Garlene. You were bought here from other lands? Garabanya. Yangsha, Boja, Dalmasca, to name a few. Some dragged here against our will. Others fed bollocks about a better life, all to put, put to work to extract Cerulean. All given their esteemed title of On, placing us firmly at the bottom of the rung of the ladder. But the old hierarchy means nothing in the new Garlemald, says we. About the only thing that's escaped more or less unscathed is Cerulean Mingus, still sustaining us even with our paymasters out of the picture. We hear you're experts in drying up cerulean from the bottom of the lake. But how could you do that if it's frozen over? How wouldn't you like to know trade secrets, I'm afraid? At any rate, it's not as if cerulean is used very much these days. What with the city in ruins? We take enough to power our heaters and save the surplus for later. And though it helps stave off the cold, it does sod all about our hunger unless you can trade it away. Speaking of which, be sure to tell your contingent we've got cerulean by the barrelful. They're interested. We'll exchange it for whatever provisions they're willing to spare. We can certainly ask, but if you're all but if you're all free to go now, why carry on living here? Free to go, go where? Even if we manage to get back to our homelands, be nothing left for us thanks to the Empire. And the knowledge and skills we acquired working here would be practically useless outside of Garlemald. So we're staying here for the time being. Long as there's a need for Cerulean, we'll find a way to get by, even if Garlemald as we knew it is gone. Well, I guess, yeah, I mean, gone for good. 
What if it's not gone for good? Garlemald can come back. Just don't be evil and try to kill everybody. Shouldn't be too hard. Regardless of what the Isobard contingent does for the people of Garlemald, the Empire itself is already a thing of the past. For many, that would be a cause for celebration, while for others, the whole way of life has been turned upside down. After all the atrocities committed in the Empire's name, perhaps it is for the best that the that is consigned to history. What of the ordinary people, their lives and their stories, should they be forgotten too? I suppose there'll be plenty of time to ponder that later. For now, let's see about getting some Cerulean. Um, do you have an ether right now? Okay. Enhanced mana font. Great. Oh, reduces the recast timer. Sweet. So you've come seeking Cerulean, have you? Yes, but we don't have anything to trade. What those pure bloods of Victor Spoil sent you? To turn to their enemies for help. They must be in a des more desperate than I thought. Then again, Lysiana's got her little sister to think about. There is a person in there. A sister, but we almost saw Lysiana and three men. It's possible she died from whatever was ailing her. She needs treatment. I doubt there's any way to get it around here. I may have refused Lysiana at first, thinking she'd come back with something for exchange, but I can spare a bottle's worth of cerulean. Consider it a reward for introducing me to the rest of your contingent. Be sure to send them our way, you hear? Thank you for the Cerulean. I can't for the life of me think why Lysiano would keep her sister a secret from us. We can ask about that after we've delivered the Cerulean. Let's hurry back. Yeah, why is she hiding her sister? She's got to be hiding her sister for a reason. Maybe there's something wrong with her? Maybe she's an oh. Maybe this is the whole Walking Dead zombie thing all over again. Maybe she's been bang. You know, maybe she's enthralled, enthralled, and she doesn't want to give her sister up. Oh, that would be terrible. But maybe that's what it is. Her sister is enthralled, and she can't save her, so she keeps her locked away. Well, we're gonna find out, aren't we? Oh wait, I gotta go up the stairs. Feliciana, I have your cerulean, but I'll only give it to you if you tell me about your sister. This isn't right, it's too quiet. I would've thought Alfano would be treating them by the fire. But they're nowhere to be seen. I'll look inside the house. Won't you search outside? Couldn't have gone far. They didn't take off no prisoner or anything, did they? Is the radio still playing? The radio's gone. Where are they? What? Are they dead? Her sister must be thralled. They asked me. Asked me to help carry supplies. When I followed them back here, they attacked me. Caught me off guard. Forced me to defend myself. I fear they fared rather worse than me. You can't fool us. You know, we know what you're about. Vultures, that's what you are. Waiting in the wings for us to show weakness. Then in you swoop. Here to help? What raw all ploy. All to make us lower our guard. Let you in. Put ourselves at your mercy. Put us in chains. Steal our lands. Get your revenge. You're wrong. That's not what any of us want. Save the argument for later. We've got bigger problems. I found empty medicine bottles and a bed that's still warm. It's true. Luciano was hiding his sick sister inside the house. But now there's no sign of them either. Who are they? Where'd they go? Away from you and yours. And if you think, I'll tell you you're a fool. I'll never get up my people. We're trying to help them, you idiot. 
Her sister's ill. The empty bottles prove it, so the medicines run out. Or she put it in her pockets to make it easier to carry, to avoid the sound of clinking glass. There are bees everywhere. How could you let them go alone? To protect them from you! Aww. They don't trust us. You invaded our homeland. Tainted with some sorcery used to slay our countrymen. A garland should sooner die than suffer the insult. Better for them to flee, keep their purity intact, than be corrupted by your vile magics. We were waiting, waiting for a chance to free them since the moment you arrived. No, we're gonna help you. This is getting us nowhere. I cannot say how Luciana and her sister will react when we find them, but we must. Go on without me, both of you. I first need to tend to my injuries and theirs. I will join you in the search after. Alright, be careful. We'll do our best to find them quickly. There's only one path out of here. That's where we'll start. They really don't trust us. I mean, seeing it from their point of view, though, I mean, I'll follow you as soon as I can. After I've given them some basic treatment, I'll take them in inside the house and use a light sleep enchantment to help them rest. I'm sure they don't cause any more trouble. I'm sorry, but this is something I must do. Oh my gosh. They really don't trust us, like, at all. I hope they're okay. They don't understand that it was their own emperor's son who did this. Two sets of footprints. Rum, 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 rum. It is definitely them. Come on. Okay, we're moving on. They tried to cross the ice fields on their own. Ali, say, do you see them? Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> I just totally hit that <laughs> itchy nose. The trail stops at the frozen lake. Perhaps they chose this route as to not leave footprints. I can't think of any other reason. Look at the place. It's crawling with bees. I can only imagine how it must be for her ailing sister to cross the ice. We could really do with Alphano's help, but we can't afford to wait. Let's split up and look for clues. Oh, are you serious? Any clues? How big? Oh my gosh, it's a giant area. Carbuncle! Oh, there's no clues. Ah! Empty bottle. Oh no. The empty bottle smells faintly of alcohol. The thin coating of dirt indicates it has been for some time. Unlikely connected to it. So we keep looking. Maybe they head under the bridge? Anything under the bridge? Ah, there's something over there. Fresh blood! Oh no! That is a lot of blood. Blood staining the snow appears to be fresh. Judging by the amount, the victim may be severely wounded. It leads southeastward. Not southwest, but southeast. Harbunga! Don't be dead, please don't be dead, please don't be dead, please don't be dead. Please don't be dead, please don't be dead, please don't be dead. We wanted to help you. They're dead. Oh my god. They really thought we were evil. 
they really thought we were evil. You lay off now, you can't save them. Blood trail. We found one. They were attacked. They're already gone. No. Safer to brave the wilds than trust in our magic. We should have... I should have... Don't beat yourself up over it, Alfie. There's nothing you could have done differently. We can't leave them like this. We have to take them home. What if we're only making it worse? Maybe we don't belong here, but neither do they. Not out here in the wind and the cold. They died. They distrusted us so much. Leave the radio. I heard the story about Varus's voice from beyond the grave. Of course, I didn't believe it, but Licinia and her sister did. Perhaps there is something to the tale after all. I want to understand, so I'm going to borrow this for a while, if that's all right. Oh, Alfie. You had every reason not to trust us. We came as trespassers, invaders. But I pray that in time, we will be more than that to you. That we will find a way to help your loved ones. And see that no more children are left to freeze alone in the snow. be better to try to brave the wild and run away with her sister than to trust us. We're that much of a threat to the Garleans. We're monsters in their eyes. We're monsters! Elise, you okay? There must be something we could have done, but what? Should we never have come here? Would they still be alive if we hadn't? We've already caused enough harm here. Let's return to camp before we cause any more. As for those inside the house, we should send someone to take care of them. Someone who isn't us. All we can do for now is make our report to Lucia. And do everything in our power to prevent further tragedy. So let's not linger here anymore. Come. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh! That... I... That was... Oh... She'd rather brave the wilds when she knows she won't survive with her sister than to trust us. That's how untrusted we are in Garlemald. We are seen as invaders. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was terrible. 
Okay, well, let's see what other damage we're gonna cause. Here we go. I'm gonna stand by Alfie's side. LSA and Alpha know tell me they've finished a preliminary search for the survivors, but refrain from saying much more than that. Clearly, they're reluctant to provide details. May I ask for your account? Yeah, we tried to help them, and then they attacked us because they didn't trust us because we're invaders, and then the two girls died. <sighs> Thank you for your report. We shall inform the troops of these developments and instruct them to proceed with the utmost caution should they encounter any survivors. Mm -hmm. Allow me to go and speak with the ones at the Victor's Spoils. They may be more willing to listen to a fellow Garlean and accept our offer of assistance. Troop, you got a gem in your I head. I pray you are right. And though I am loath to burden you any further, should there be an appropriate occasion to speak of Lacinia and her sister? Please do so. We don't even know her sister's name. She died without a name. I am sorry to have put you through this. My distress is nothing compared to their suffering. So tell me, what else have we learned? Oh uh, yeah, the other people went out. What did they learn? As you may have already heard, we have succeeded in curing the members of the Popularis, Maxima identified. They have provided us with some intriguing insights into the current state of Garlemald. How it fell on a single night? Oh, let's see. The assassination of Emperor Varus was the catalyst for the civil war. Nerva declared his claim to the throne, and his opponents refused to recognize it. Fighting broke out in the capital where Nerva's third legion clashed with the first, who remained loyal to Varus even after his death. Of course, even Imperial warmongers would balk at the idea of turning their shining city into a battleground. Like burning down the wood to spite the wasps. Neither side would be so mad. Unless something or someone inflamed their animosity to such an extent that they could not help but act against their better judgment. Being enthralled. It brings to mind events of the Gimlet Dark, does it not? The Emperor's sudden withdrawal from the front line, specifically. Nerva and his father, Titus, Varus's then political rival, took advantage of rumors that Crown Prince Zenos had been possessed by a demon. Elidibus. What better way to disparage your enemies than with the truth, or a close enough approximation? Indeed. But before their accusations could be substantiated, many of Titus's followers were silenced. While some were merely stripped of their status, others died under curious circumstances. One after another, suddenly and suspiciously. Some Game of Thrones Again, stuff going Elidibus. on. Like as not, he had a hand in it. No evidence was found to implicate Varus, certainly. Nevertheless, Titus, Nerva, and the Third Legion would have judged it a brazen attempt by the Emperor to rid himself of his political enemies. And then, in the midst of this growing turmoil, Varus Soscalvis is murdered. By his own son! And Garlemald's own prodigal son. Gaius Van Belsar is named the murderer. Even though he didn't do it. Shortly thereafter, Nerva claims the right of succession. And in response, the First Legion claims the assassination was part of a coup d'etat orchestrated by Titus and Nerva. So they think he worked with they so worked no with Gaius. So no one is at fault, and everyone else is to blame. I should add that both parties received substantial financial backing, presumably to provide them with the means and encouragement to pursue a swift victory, and that these contributions came from the self-same benefactor. Xenos? I'd heard House Brutus had been filling oh, the no. Third Legion's coffers, but the first as well. It would seem so. Though the Popularis determined that the First Legion received funds from a variety of organizations, all had connections to House Brutus. 
So Fandaniel, in the guise of Asahi, was playing both sides against each other the entire time. To create that turmoil. The information we gained from my friends does not end there. One night, shortly after fighting broke out, the capital was shaken by an immense tremor. Oh, From that really? point onward, they have no memories, no recollection of any events, including our clash on the Magna Glacius. That's when they that's when they were tempered. So they were saying that um, one thing that happened in Amarat was that the earth itself, the ground beneath their feet, screamed and trembled. Is this the tremble? Because then they have no recollection. But when asked about the Imperial Palace and its bizarre transformation. They somehow recall Emperor Varys giving them orders in their dreams. May the Tower of Babel stand as testament to the glory of Garlemald. This sounds awfully familiar. We have something to show you all. The radio. Varys spoke to them through this radio. Perhaps it was a recording, but if not, that would be inexplicable. We are of one mind, then. The ether that permeates the ore used in this device is almost identical to that of the talismans. I see it. While it is likely more by coincidence than design, these devices might also ward against a primal's influence. So, hold on. So anyone who is near a radio wouldn't have been enthralled? A picture is beginning to form. If the tremor felt throughout Garlemald was a wave of ether emitted by a primal, then while those within range would have been tempered, those huddled around a radio desperate for news concerning the Civil War would have been spared. No wonder Licinia kept it close. Oh. My friends, I must speak with you. A young man was caught trying to steal our supplies. He is a soldier of the Iron Men, we think, but one who has not been made thrall. Okay. Thankfully, Magni restrained him before blood was spilled. The stranger is outside, if you wish to ask him questions. Yes, we would. I think we do. How is he not thralled? Who do we have here? Garleans? Yes! Traitors to your homeland! Have you no shame? I am Lucia Junius, a Temple Knight of Ishgard. And you are? Julius Pianobanus. And that's all you invaders will get from me. We are not wanted. We are not here to invade Garlemald. Far from it. Like you, our allies in Eorzea and the Far East fight in defense of their lives and their loved ones even as we speak. But it is the people of Garlemald who have suffered most. This we know. And that is why we have come to offer you our aid, that we may unite against our common foe. Whether you believe me or not, those are the facts. Now, answer me this. How are you not tempered? Why would a proud soldier of the Empire be reduced to stealing? The situation must be dire indeed for you to go to such lengths. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> Speak. If it is supplies you seek, we would gladly share ours, or turn a blind eye while you leave with your spoils. I will not negotiate. My commander will determine how to deal with you and yours. Commander? If you wish to treat with him, I will take you. But 
No more than three. Very specific. Well, I'm obviously I one don't of much them. I like the sound of that. But if we do accept his proposal, I suggest the two of us and... Please allow me and Alizé to act as envoys. May I ask why? We have seen with our own eyes the hardships the Guardians face. How their futures and lives hang in the balance. I think it's a trap. It's not the warmest invitation, but it's an opportunity to prove our intentions true. Maybe not a chance to make things right, but a chance to make them better. You want to make up for half to the sisters. I'm going with you. I would never leave you two behind. I can see that persuading you otherwise is a lost cause, but you will proceed with the utmost care. Yes, ma'am. Couple of children and what? A cell sword? Is this an insult? Excuse me, I am Teheka Fimker, adventurer by trade, champion of Eorzea, bringer of darkness. Not in the least. You will find that they are more than qualified to speak on our behalf. You bet your bottom dollar. There are many dangers on the road ahead. I will need that back. I will defend you. another food said you farewell have you perhaps it is unwise volunteer for mission so soon after our previous disaster nonetheless I shall not squander the opportunity I know I know this won't get back Lysenia or his sister by taking the risk making the same mistake as possible but better than okay You'll be received as invited guests, so I urge you to observe proper social etiquette and conduct yourselves accordingly. Your safe return takes precedence over above all else. Remember this. Then, Cred, in particular, will be worried sick if you've gone too long. May the Fury watch over and keep you. Let's go, boy. Are you and the children ready? I will explain the route once we're outside your camp. If anyone attempts to follow us, we will judge it as an act of hostility. We will not hesitate to take appropriate measures. I'd expect nothing less. You have our full cooperation. Uh, excuse me. I could beat you up so hard. I could sneeze and a flare would come out of my nose. I could hiccup and there is a lightning on everybody. <laughs> Ding a hopper. All right, this is far enough. Listen carefully. We head over that hill. And follow the road until we reach Liminal Station 4. Children in the lead. I want you where I can see you. We do have names, you know. I'm Alice and he's Alphano. And last but not least, there's Teheka. Teheka, where have I heard that before? Because I am your champion! No matter Alphano and Alice say, we'll watch the road ahead while we bring up the rear. I wasn't lying about there being many dangers. So your turn to run, not son to run, towards the station. If you even think about going for your weapon, the deal is off. Should any creatures bar the way, we go around them. Once you choose to depart, Julius will accompany you. Alphano and Alice will then begin to move towards the station, make your way to the Liminal Station without falling behind. If you leave Julius for any reason, or lose sight of Alfie and Ally, you can try again at the starting point. Ready? Yes. We could just take a more direct route, but cool. Avoid the bad guys. Avoid the bad guys. Avoid the bad guys. Just keep running. Okay, 
the easiest surface to run on. This better not be a trap, Julius. I will defend my children. <laughs> Even though you call them children, they don't want it. They are my twins. I will protect them. Better not draw attention. It's so loud. Watch, there's a station. Watch, it's a trap and they're just gonna put us in jail. You know, we get there and um, he puts his gun to us and they throw us in jail. And then I break us out because I am the champion of Eorzea. We're here. It's nothing like the ones in Thandalon. Oh, I didn't mean to type you again. <laughs> Julius, we're here. It better not be a bloody trap. This is it. The first stop, that is. Good. It looks like your friends knew better than to follow us. Are these your headquarters? No, we're stopping here so I can check for pursuers. Since it appears you've kept your side of the bargain, we can carry on. I really don't trust this guy. North of the station is Regio de Morum, one of the main residential areas, or at least it was. The afflicted roam the streets in packs. They'll tear us to shreds if given the chance. Keep close. No wandering off. Understood? 525. I'm still stronger than that. 530! Come on! Give me something better! Julius only knows too well the dangers looking around every corner. From here, we'll be headed northeast, keeping to the left of the whale ray. While the route itself is straightforward, getting past the hordes unseen is anything but. Keep your weapons at the ready. They were attacked their own countrymen? Aye, they spared their own, but slaughtered the rest without hesitation. Though we'll try to avoid detection, the chances of sneaking by completely unnoticed are slim at best. I will lead the way. In the event we are seen, you are to fight the mob. Those two will follow us, provided they can refrain from drawing their own weapons. While I doubt they would be foolish enough to stab their guy in the back, I'll not take that chance. With that said, let us proceed. Okay, let us proceed. I was gonna say, turn your back, man. Okay, so they say go to the left side of the station. Left. Oh, back here. And we're already attacked. Is that Julius? Yeah, I just want to get one more. There we go. <laughs> I see why your comrades chose you. Julius, our contingent has a cure for the afflicted, or tempered as we call them. Your people would need to be taken into custody that they that we may administer the treatment, so they would eventually regain their sanity. Is that so? For all I know, your treatment would simply force them to forsake one master for another. As far as I and my legion are concerned, they are no longer our people. They are beyond saving. Those who thought differently and tried to reason with them were butchered for the bleeding hearts. Come, we have to keep moving. Okay, moving on. Uh, at the train. Oh, I see them. I'll be coming in from the back. I'm here! Boom! Boom! Ba ba! One, two, I can count! Three, high flare! Aha! Going. Looks 
like we're not being followed. We will continue onward. Okay. And I still kept my non Enochian anymore. <laughs> it's kind of nice I don't have to start the set with Enochian and then if I screw up the rotation after we cast it. It's kind of nice. Oh, looks like you didn't need my help with this one. I meant what I said. These people deserve only death. I stayed my hand before, only out of desire to remain undiscovered. That is still the higher priority. We should continue to avoid any unnecessary confrontation. Keep following the railway. But we can cure them. But you know what? In the beginning of the game, when we found someone who was tempered, we would kill them. Like, I don't know if anyone remembers, but in the very beginning of the game, when you found someone that was tempered, it was more humane to end their life than to have them completely enthralled and controlled by a primal. Follow-up question, what primal are they enthralled to? They say that they hear Var Varus's voice through the radio, right? And those by the radio were not tempered. So I'm wondering if the radio waves like carried the tempering as a voice so they thought they heard Varus. But following that up, does that make Varus uh, primal? Like is their belief in Emperor Varus so strong they created their own primal? Do, do they even have the magic to do that? Oh my god, what happened to them? What are those? Those are not people! not people boom what they're like slime creatures with tentacles all over look at what they have become would you still stand there and claim they can be cured those exposed to a vast quantity of primal ether may suffer severe corruption. Even with treatments, such victims are beyond salvation. Then you admit it. Now that you have seen those monstrosities for yourself, perhaps you'll think twice before speaking of a cure. But we can cure them! We can cure them before they get to that point. And where is this crystal? There's an ether right there and I don't know where it is. It must be either on top of the rock, or under the rock, or something. Ooh, no, bad. Ooh, is there a thing here? 276 Northwest. Give me a minute, I'm gonna find this thing. I'll be back! Hello, Julius. I'm back. We're almost there. You have kept your side of the agreement, so I will keep mine this way. How far is this place? This better not be a blasted trap. Come on, guys. Here, Julius. This is Tertirium, one of Garland's largest stations, and now serves as our headquarters. I've already sent the twins ahead. I'll be with you soon. So wait for me at the bottom of the stairs. It's a trap! It's a trap. Hello, Theodora. What are you doing? She has clearly no intention of speaking with you. Can I help any of you? I have a feeling there's a trap. Oh my gosh, and then they keep the radio playing. Darn it! I had to go ahead and it didn't work. We have to basically somehow turn on the ether egg. Hi, Alfie. This better not be a blasted trap. It's 
It's so sad. Their whole way of life is gone. It's plain to see why they chose this for their base of operations. They could have done a lot worse. Even so, I imagine it's not the easiest place to live. Indeed, and if Julius was willing to make the perilous journey to Camp Broken Glass in search of food, their own supplies must be exhausted. They may be shielded from the wind and snow, but it's still bitterly cold. Much like Victor's spoils, it must be a constant struggle to keep their people warm. Lower your voices. While you may be here as my guest, the others will not take kindly to your presence. My commander is in the locomotive over there. Oh, so they turn the park trains into like houses and offices. Let's go. Where's the radio? There it is. None of them will speak to me. By the end of this, hopefully they will. LSA? He certainly looks apart. Alpha no? Now comes the true test. Julius. These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Yes, sir. I present to you our commander, Lord Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. Hello. The First? I had no idea you had survived. We lost our emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. Barely. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. What's that supposed to mean? We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. Bitter man. Driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste. Yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. It was only with Magitek that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. This wasn't our doing! Conquest and Empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this, and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. Mm. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. To assist. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. You don't trust us. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. Well, yeah, because we want to take down the tower that's going to literally end the world. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. And after compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. But you're 
Your empire is already brought to heel. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference. To make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. They hope for their emperor So back. much blood has been shed, so much lost, all because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together to face our problems as one? I'm not going to convince him. Answer me this, young peacemakers. Yes. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? That's what Gaius was saying in the end of A Realm Reborn. Is it because we do not share your faith? That we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? It's because you mercilessly try to take over everyone with force and not diplomacy. Disparity is the root of discord. And peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream. And the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. That is why we Galians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. They'll stand alone. They'll stand alone if it kills them. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. Yep, yeah, they're gonna arrest us. They're gonna take us hostage. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you if you cooperate. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up, as by dawn you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment, but there is one condition. I need to give up my weapon, don't I? Collar them. Oh no! No, don't! It's the shot collar. It's the same shot collar that the gunburger guy used. It's how they tortured him. What are these? Oh no. Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Oh, no. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. Stop. Keep away from that one. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. He knows who I am. Yeah! Yeah, dudes! It's me! It's me! You heard my name. Say my name! Even if she allowed herself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No. If she refuses to obey, we will activate the twins' restraints instead. I... Oh, gosh. I love the twins. Please don't. You needn't worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. 
Even now, you still... Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? Encouragement, camaraderie, friendship. Because even the most bitter adversaries may one day see reason. On the coldest, blackest nights, meager though it may be, you must share the warmth of our fire. I like that. On the coldest, blackest of nights, meager though it may be, we must share the warmth of our fire. Oh my god, I forgot that's what Worship Hunt's in! Of course I picked a line that he likes! Oh, I forgot Worship Hunt said that. You are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. I forgot Orishafon said that. Oh my god, it's been so long since I played Heaven's Ward. I'm getting teary. You will be their warden. Take them away. Yes, sir. I forgot Arthur Fon said that. That was after in a realm were born. After we had um fled Ulda. That's after we had fled Ulda and we went to um was that Camp Dragonhead? And we had no help from anybody. We were wanted because they thought that I killed the Sultana. I forgot you said that. Oh, I forgot you said that. And now I have to behave or they're gonna shock the twins. Well, oh my god, I forgot he said that. Oh, I feel so bad. I love the man and I don't I, I mean I can't remember every single word that was said in this game. I bet you there are others who are like, oh that's what he said. It's not like a, a smile better to the hero, you know? That's That line is infamy. It's like, remember us, remember that we once lived. Um, I didn't remember that he said that. But look at that. I went with the line that Orchifon said. Because it just felt right. He, see, he was a wise man. Now, the thing that Hyland said at the beginning on the boat, where she said that, um, was it on the beginning of the boat? No, I think it was when she took over Kryal. She said that she could feel, you know, um, not feel, but like the soul of Minfilia after the first situation. She brought it through the ethereal sea to bring it back to the source because that's where it belonged. She said she felt another. I'm wondering if that's Archifon. I mean, so many people have died in this game. What if it's everyone we've lost? Archifon, Moonbreed, Papalimo. And I know there's plenty others. That was good. This is good. This is really good. Um, this basement area right here, not basement, this subway area right here reminds me of in uh, Chrono Trigger when uh, you go through the time machine accidentally, you go way, way into the future when you... Ah! <laughs> Let's stand over here. So in the... <laughs> So this place reminds me of in Chrono Trigger when you go to the future by accident, and this is where you learn about Lavos, um, that all these people are hiding in like this underground bunker sort of thing because everything's been destroyed by Lavos. That's what this section here reminds me of. Um, and just the general feel of it, I know I keep mentioning The Walking Dead, but like the general feel of it it's like, you know, what happens when society falls? We've been in Eorzea and Doma and Nordvon and all these places where society hasn't actually fallen. It's gotten close to falling. It has restructured into something else, like, like on the first, but it hasn't actually ever like crumbled. And we've been there right at the end of a society crumbling. And now we are. We're right when... Garlemald, basically right when Garlemald fell. The tower just went up not too long ago. People are still fleeing. People still remember fresh in their minds the night that their world ended. This is the walking dead to them. And I just think that's very interesting to see how this goes and everyone honestly thinks that we caused it. They can't fathom in their heads that the son of the emperor 
is causing all of their trouble and that the son of the emperor is the one who killed the emperor. It wasn't Gaius and those other two that they say was part of it. It was Xenos. But no one, either they don't know because the truth is being hidden by their media or because they all listen to the radio or Xenos is just telling the lie. No, he doesn't care. Xenos doesn't care. It, it, it's Van Daniel because Van Daniel was funding both sides of the war, they said, with the House Brutus account. So Van Daniel was spreading it, which he wants the turmoil. Like, he wants this to happen. Now, what gets me, which they're probably going to answer very soon, is why we know why the people around the radio were safe. It was because it emits the same sort of protection as the warding scales do. But why do they hear Varus's voice? If the tremor happened, and that tremor was the primal's etheric energy, and that's what enthralled people, and at that time, people started hearing Varus's voice on the radio, does that mean that what really happened is just because of the war? Oh, maybe that's what happened. Fan Daniel sparks a civil war, right? Xenos kills the emperor. And Fandaniel funds both sides of the war. The side that believes that Varus is still somehow alive and or needs to pass to his son. Or the side that believes Gaius and these other two legatus were in some sort of coup d'etat and wanted to take over the throne. So the first and third legions and they clashed. So all the citizens are like, what's going on? There's a civil war and it's happening in our city because Fandaniel is making them do that. He's messing with them. So what if they were all hoping and praying we want peace again like we had with Emperor Varus? And then they released an etheric surge. I don't know how they released the etheric surge. It had to be something that Xenos did. But they released an etheric surge during the Civil War. And those not around radio had such a, a desire, you know, for that peace again that was there when Varus was there, that that was the prayers they needed to create a Varus primal. Wouldn't that be cool if we fought Emperor Varus? Like, actually fought him. I think there was, like, an instant fight with him. Um, I mean, it's probably not going to happen. Probably going way off the rails, but you have all the ingredients. You have despair, so you have the hopes and prayers of everyone. You have the fact that people around the radio were against the power, heard Emperor Varus' voice, and you have that tremor that happened throughout the city right before the tower was starting to be built, the Tower of Babel, apparently, which means that there was an etheric surge. It's kind of like if there's a whole bunch of crystals there. So you have the prayer, you have the voice, you have the power source. What's to stop us to saying that there's not a Varus primal? Maybe that's what's in the tower. Maybe they're going to bring upon us the primal that we haven't seen yet because it's a primal created not from a religion. This will be the first primal that is not built off of some religious following or artifact. It will be built on hopes of a, of a living person. We'll find out. This is getting really good. This is really good. I'm very happy. But I am out of time for today. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.